What's up guys? Long time no see. It has been a damn minute. Haven't been posting on the channel a lot for a number of reasons and not gonna lie, 2023 was an absolute shit show in many ways. But I also had a lot of good come out of it which I'm gonna shed light on in this video. I'm not really making this video for anyone but myself to really just look back on in the future which I'm going to get into a little later on. I'm gonna cover the following to kind of bring people up to speed with what's been going down this past year. Remarketing roles at production, new hobbies I've become addicted to, getting bought out of a business partnership for the first time, starting an e-commerce business, and my plans for 2024 as a creative and for this channel. So as most know who have been subscribed to my channel for a while now, I partnered with somebody a few years back and we started a video production company called Subtle Cinematics. When we first started and as this video production company grew pretty quickly in a short period of time, everybody more or less associated me as the co-founder of this new video production company and not as a freelancer. Now, when running a video production company or any company for that matter where you're in a 50-50 partnership, these partnerships can get a little tricky because at some point from the statistics that I've even researched, 50-50 partnerships normally dissolve at around the two to three year mark, which is exactly what ended up happening. Because our overhead was so high, being that we had an office space expense, high employee overhead, and when I got paid out, say, I don't know, $3,000 in a month from the business, aka my payroll, my business partner would have to get paid out the exact same amount. So between our monthly payroll, employee payroll, taxes, other overhead, there were months that our overhead was well over $10,000 cash per month, which is kind of a lot of money for a small business. Long story short, I just felt for the amount of effort I was putting in, I wasn't being nearly compensated enough payroll wise for my time. I mean, I don't think I've talked about this on the channel and I wish that I vlogged this moment because it was actually hilarious looking back on it but my car actually got stolen about six months before I decided to leave this production company and I couldn't even afford to buy a new car. I was literally using my girlfriend's car or my parents' car to get around and if I absolutely had to go somewhere, um, I'd just even like carpool with somebody. Being that this is around like year seven of me being a full-time filmmaker, I found this to just not make any sense at all. Like why struggle if I've been at this filmmaking thing for like almost a decade now, right? We decided to dissolve, but there were a few kind of issues with making this decision and why it was a pretty difficult decision to make even though it was financially draining me month after month. One, if I left, I would basically have to almost rebrand my freelance business roles at production and really put it out there that I'm back on my own and my name is not attached to a video production company anymore. Number two, and this was probably just the most careless decision I ever made was that I rebranded this YouTube channel to Subtle Cinematics for almost two years. And once we dissolved the business, I changed it back to Rolls at Production, but this caused quite a bit of confusion to subscribers and is something I shouldn't have done to begin with because, because at the end of the day, this channel has quite literally been eight years of my own sweat equity leading up to the channel name change. So why let others reap the benefits of a community that I created when they weren't there during that initial like almost 10 years of literally posting on this channel completely free of pay and just out of my own time. Now with that being said, thank God like myself and my business partner are both like good human beings and we dissolved and split up our assets 50 50. Um, when we did that, he basically said I would never put a price on the YouTube channel because it's basically the one thing I started out with before I even went full time as a videographer. So I swapped it back over and all was well. And I bring this up only because guys like when you have a company like a corporation an LLC and for example this YouTube channel when the channel is monetized and the monetization money is actually going into the uh, the corporation to the corp the channel is actually owned by the video production company Subtle Cinematics and not Anastas Marigus of Rolls at Production anymore. It's not my channel, it's the company's channel. So technically, if I had a really bad business partner during this whole dissolving process, he could have actually said, no, I'm putting a price on this channel and we're gonna have to get an accountant to basically assess the 
the price of this and split it 50-50 and I'd have to pay my business partner out, my ex-business partner, um, 50% of what the channel is worth to actually buy it back for myself. I'm just kind of glad that that didn't happen and when we did split assets in terms of like the social media handles, you know, he took the Instagram account and the TikTok and then I just took back the YouTube and we just called it a day. Now the crappy thing about dissolving a business is again the asset split. Basically all of the video gear my business partner and I brought into the company because it was insured under Subtle Cinematics, we personally didn't actually own the gear anymore the company did. So we actually had to price out all of the gear and get rid of it and then use the money to repurchase new equipment, which is why you now see me shooting with a Canon over Lumix. Kind of had to start over on the gear side of things, which made for a slower kickstart to freelancing on my own again under Rosa Production. Now, of course, this ended up being a really good decision on the financial side of things because within two months of leaving the company, I immediately got a few retainer clients, handful of one-off higher paying clients and was able to buy a car, travel, and just back to being more financially comfortable again. This is something I definitely missed and realized was a big stress in the back of my mind for so long, so we all good now. So now that I was back to freelancing in 2023, all on my own again, this actually opened up a lot of free time even when I was busy booking client shoots. I thought to myself, I think it's time to put some of this free time towards something that will keep me resilient, something that's good for my mental health. I chose to actually get back into Muay Thai kickboxing training. Um, I train at a gym locally called Siam Muay Thai. It's a very traditional style of Muay Thai kickboxing and an unbelievably good cardio workout. After training at this gym consistently for around like six months, I decided I wanted to take up all around MMA training. So I signed up for a membership at a second gym where I still train at to this day. Um, and that's where I also train Muay Thai kickboxing, but also a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. And then I also train with my cousin Steph over at Crown Boxing, um, just doing one-on-one -on -one, uh, private boxing sessions. Now I've always been told growing up that I have a very addictive personality. And whenever I find a new hobby or something I like, I don't ever do it at 50%. I literally go 150% into it. And that's kind of what happened with MMA training. As long as I'm not booked during the evenings for shoots, I'm normally training on average around like like eight to 10 hours per week and then hitting the gym anywhere from five to six times per week uh, just to make sure that I'm not losing too much muscle just because of all the cardio training I'm doing every single week. Now this might sound super excessive to most but I've honestly guys never felt healthier, um, never felt like I've had more mental clarity in my life and I've honestly never been in this good of shape. Like right now I'm in the best shape of my life hands down. I only bring this up because I feel that when you're creative and you're super busy, it's really easy to get locked in and not have much of a life outside of work. I get that the hustle culture behind it is cool, being an entrepreneur is cool, it's exciting, but I'm just at the point where I kind of need to be surrounded by some sort of community and be around people and not just be locked into my office or spending all of my time on video shoots. I think that it just gets like really unhealthy after a while and leads to like a lot of creative burnout. All right, so as time goes on, I end up meeting my now good buddy named Pete over at 155 Films. Pete, funny enough, got into filmmaking about four or five years ago and had originally stumbled upon one of my fitness video tutorials here on the channel found out I was actually local to him in the next city over and reached out to me on Facebook Marketplace to purchase a bunch of my Lumix equipment that I actually had to sell because we were dissolving subtle cinematics. So when he came to buy a whack load of gear off me, we kind of were just chatting filmmaking stuff, we kept in touch and uh, met up with Pete and he asked me if I was interested in helping him with his client shoots. Now his shoots actually for the most part take place in North Battleford, Saskatchewan, which is about four hours away from where we live and we actually film on a number of different indigenous reserves and that's kind of the niche that he's super tapped into. So really for the majority of last summer, I was finding myself out of town with him on like three, four, sometimes five day long shoots, filming anything from powwows, interviews, event recaps, so on and so forth. So while I was busy on shoots with Pete, I had a few monthly retainers, a few higher budget one-off commercial shoots I would take on throughout each month. And on top of all of this, I was involved in an online hockey goaltender development program called Increase Performance. 
So basically, I got involved in increased performance while I was still at Subtle Cinematics with my ex-business partner with Subtle, and then we partnered up with a professional hockey goaltender to create an online hockey goaltender development program. So basically, my role in it was to create social media content and course content. So basically, I was an equal partner amongst my two other business partners, and my role in the business was to shoot and edit online course material along with social media content to post at scale and grow our social media followings which would in turn convert those followers into online course sales. Now being a part of this company was honestly like it was pretty wild because I remember at one point I was editing course material and on top of that I was also editing upwards of like hundreds of social media posts per month. We're talking posting upwards of 20 times per day on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, along with posting two YouTube videos per week. Now, I was originally involved in this business because we all had the idea that this would turn into a passive income stream and not a full-time thing because we all had other stuff going on business-wise, kind of like on the side. Now, as time went on and the brand increased performance just blew up in the hockey world, long story short, going back to what I had mentioned about Subtle Cinematics, having equal equity stake in a business means that if one of us got paid out, say, I don't know, $2,000, the other partners would have to get paid out equally, meaning that we have to pull out now $6,000 dollars in total right so it just jacks up the overhead now this is fine everyone had their part in the business and I get that it's a startup company but you know being two years into it and still not getting paid properly for the amount of time that we were sinking in and eventually my other two business partners you know they wanted to go full-time and just go all in on this business so they basically gave me the ultimatum of sticking around to see things through or just getting bought out and doing whatever else I wanna do with the time that was freed up from this online-based business. After thinking about this for some time, I was on the fence about leaving at first because we had been working on this business for like a solid two years and I'd sunk probably thousands of hours into it for very little pay. It was pretty much just sweat equity at this point. But at the end, I did decide that it was best for me to step away completely and just get bought out. The whole business model personally just gave me um, the same feeling of being a part of my old video production company, which I just ended up being very unhappy at because just of the amount of hours I was putting in for so long and still not getting compensated anywhere close to what my time is worth as a professional videographer and editor. And I mean, at the end of the day, I wish them all the best. I'm sure they're gonna do absolutely amazing things. I'm sure at some point that that online program is just gonna blow up and they're gonna make a lot of money and that's cool and all, but at the end of the day too, like I was never a hockey player growing up. Both my other business partners were at the time, like they, they were hockey players. One of them coaches like goaltending and is like very fully immersed into the sport where I just wasn't. So it just didn't really make sense to go full time into something that I actually just wasn't very passionate about to even begin with. But again, that's another learning experience. Don't get into businesses just because you see the dollar signs or you see, oh, this could make me passive income. Like you're still going to get burnt out or you're just gonna get to a point where you just stop caring that much about actually showing up every day. And it just feels like actual work and like shitty work when it shouldn't. It should be fun, it should be exciting. It's a startup business. But for me, it was just the complete opposite by the end of it. I just wasn't very happy. So um, it just made sense for me to exit and for my other two business partners to take, you know, full reins on it and totally run with it. And again, hope they become successful with it. I'm sure they will. So I bring all this up because going through a buyout process was something completely new to me. I've never experienced a buyout before. I had many chats with lawyers and accountants to understand how these things work. And honestly, at the end of the day, it was a really awesome learning experience because it made me now be able to see red flags from a mile away when it comes to startup sweat equity in a new business, which actually ended up making me finally realize that my time is more valuable than I had originally thought. I say this because late November 2023, I actually partnered with one of my closest friends, Adam, who you have maybe actually seen on the channel. If you've seen my fitness video tutorials, I featured him in a lot of them. We've been close friends for quite some time now, and he actually called me, um, I believe it was in August um, of 2023, asking if I'd be interested in partnering with him on selling an e-commerce product, which happened to be portable ice baths and getting into selling health and wellness products. 
Now, because I train so much MMA, I'm always looking for ways to muscle recover quicker, to train harder for longer periods of time, and more consistently minimizing injuries. It just seemed like a product that made sense to promote and really go all in on. Now, I'm gonna bring this back a bit to mention that when you're partnered with the right people selling the right product, partnerships just all of a sudden make so much more sense. And this partnership has been absolutely amazing so far. We're about one month into launch and we've grossed a substantial amount of money pretty well almost blew out of our first large order of product and grown our socials much quicker than most startups and are already looking to launch a higher ticket product in the new year of 2024. So seeing how much growth has been had on something as simple as an e-commerce product in just one month really made me realize that our business model and product is very strong and has huge potential. If you guys wanna check out the new company, search up creo.therapy on Instagram. All the content that's posted on there is curated by me. All right, so my plans as a creative and this channel going into 2024. Personally, I'm going to be sinking the majority of my time into this new company, Creo Health and Wellness. Um, as most of you know, I've been filming fitness videos for a really long time, and they're by far one of my favorite niches to film out of any niche I specialize in. So curating content for this brand that I actually have equity in, Honestly, it doesn't really feel like work to me. Don't get me wrong, I'll still be filming video client work in between Creo, but at some point, I'm gonna wanna look into going full time into this new business because it just makes sense for me. Personally, what I've learned in the past really like four years is that if you wanna make a lot of money as a creative, you either have to go the personal branded route and be an influencer in an extremely saturated space, which is really difficult to tap into right now, being that there's a lot of noise around videography, or you start a video production company, have hired employees, which I've already tried, and honestly, it just wasn't really for me, or you can take what you know about being a professional videographer and editor, partner with somebody and call it an e-commerce business. It could be maybe um, a storefront business and get into an industry that you're actually excited to be involved in and be the lead creative for the company, which is kind of the direction I'm looking to take in the near future with Creo. Being that we can produce high-end videos, ads and photos and not have to pay a cent for it, opens up a lot of financial room to spend more money on Facebook and Instagram ads, add more products to our lineup and so much more. Now for the channel, I think that I just got so burnt out from posting content on here because I was just so hung up on the analytics. I was constantly stressing about a low click through rate on a video, a video I thought was super educational and would be super helpful, ends up flopping in views after sinking so much time into the content. And at the end of the day, again, I just got so burnt out from posting on here. Not to mention I'd post a video and it would be such a high being like, oh my God, this is gonna help so many people. And then it flops for like six months, but then it's randomly picks up traction on month seven or eight of being posted. And it's just, I don't know, YouTube's a really weird platform like that. It's, it's quite the marathon platform, which I think is why a lot of people experience a lot of burnout on YouTube. With that being said, as of late, I've been thinking a lot about this channel and I feel like I just need to really reground myself and think about why I started posting on here to begin with. Um, you know, it wasn't for the money, subscribers or the views. I originally uploaded my automotive videos on here just to showcase my content to the world. I didn't care who was watching it, didn't care if people didn't like it. I love that people liked some of the videos too and would subscribe to me for it. I thought that that was um, very flattering and I just found it to be really exciting. And when it came to the tutorials, when I first started posting filmmaking educational content, I only did it to help inspire and motivate creatives by giving them free learning tools that I didn't have access to when I was first starting out filming music videos and fitness content. Now I will say that I'll probably be pretty quiet on here for the next month and a bit, but I do have about 50 scripted videos ready to be shot and edited that I wanna drop on the channel throughout the year. And I wanna actually draft one or two YouTube videos per week for all of 2024 and just be super, super consistent, but also be a little hands off and not be stressing to get the next video out. Obviously my goal for the channel, and I've talked about this before, is obviously 100,000 subscribers. And I'm not saying that in a clout driven way. I say that because it's been a goal of mine on this channel for just so long. Like ever since I was like a freaking teenager posting on here, and I feel that the channel just deserves to see that accomplished.
accomplishment. So that's kind of where I've been this past year. Um, it's honestly been a bit of a shit show to say the least, but there's been a lot of really good self-development from a personal standpoint, and I've probably learned the most about business this past year than any other year prior, which is something that can't always be taught but it's something that you have to experience as an entrepreneur. So yeah, thanks for sticking around. I know there's been a lot of you who have been supporting me for a long time and I really appreciate every single one of you. Be on the lookout for consistent content being released on this channel that's raw, back to the basics of how I used to do things and I couldn't be more excited to showcase all the new content I come up with in 2024. Thanks everybody for watching. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.